Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's 6x6 paper pad video. There's some roadworks going on outside my house and it keeps getting rather noisy so in a minute I'm going to switch to voiceover. But I thought I'd show you what we're going to use today before I do that. So this is the paper pad we're using today and these are the bits of paper left over from the last card we made with this pad. I've also got a greeny solid from my stash and there's a brown as well somewhere with very faint lines on it like a piece of lined paper and I thought I'd include a bit of glitter with this one and I've got this lovely non-shedding black glitter cardstock and my idea is to punch out lots of little stars this is a wonky star shape and I think it's an X cut punch and I'm going to cut maybe I don't know let's say five stars out of each piece of paper I'm not going to worry about keeping the patterns oriented the same way I'm just going to punch the stars and then arrange them on a card I find it can be quite useful if you've got paper that is quite thin and doesn't always cut well with a punch is to cut two bits of paper at a time it just gives it a bit more for the punch to bite into, I think. My card bank is going to be six by six inches, smooth white cardstock, and I've got a panel that I want to stick on the front. But before I do, I want to put something around the edge, so I'm gonna use my scoreboard. And I think I'll just come in an eighth of an inch, is that? whatever the first notch on my scoreboard is. And I'm gonna have it with the raised side pointing upwards and glue that onto my card blank. To decorate my card, I stuck all of my stars, well most of my stars, down to a piece of smooth white cardstock that's about six by six inches, just a bit of scrap that I had left over from something else. And my idea was to stick the stars all over, as I say, and then die cut a shape from it and add that to the front of my card. So I put a thin layer of tacky glue or high tack glue on my glass mat and then took each star, dipped it in the glue, and then stuck it on the piece of card, changing the orientation of the stars. So they looked as if they were all tumbling through the sky. I tried to get a good distribution of the different patterns and colors and the glitter paper. I didn't want a whole cluster of green stars together or a whole cluster of glitter stars together. I wanted everything quite spread out evenly spaced so that I could choose a good portion to cut out into a shape later on. I think when filling a piece of paper like this with shapes that are all the same size and shape, so identical really, is to start somewhere near the middle and work your way out. That way you'll be able to arrange your shapes where you want them and you won't kind of glue yourself into a corner and get uneven distribution. Once I'd filled the paper, I snipped off the overhanging bit of stars and then I picked a square frame die. So this cuts out a thin frame with stitching embossing on it, but also the square on the inside and I wanted both. So I put my square die down so that it captured lots of different stars in a pleasing way washi taped it into position and then ran it through my cuttle bug die cutting machine. After I removed it from the die, I brought in some sticky tape and stuck it on the back to make sure that the frame stayed attached to the square because I didn't want them to separate. I wanted it to act as one piece, really. For my sentiment, I'd already picked a Make a Wish stamp and I wanted to stamp that in a hole in my square. So I chose a rectangle die that would accommodate my stamp and placed it as near to the middle as I could, stuck it down with washi tape and then ran it through my die cutting machine again. 
and that created a rectangular aperture in my starry square. To stamp my sentiment I chose black soot distress oxide and this was a bit of a mistake because this stamp is made from silicone not photopolymer and silicone stamps don't always take distress oxide very well so I had to stamp it several times and by the time I'd stamped it for the I think it might have been the fourth time there was too much ink on the card and it started to splurge as I was stamping it. So it wasn't really possible to get a decent impression with the Distress Oxide and this particular stamp. So instead I bought in a scrap piece of white paper and stamped my sentiment in Stays On Black ink which does work well with silicone stamps and I managed to get a perfect impression first time. I then cut that scrap down into a rectangle that was bigger than the aperture in my square so that I could stick my square over the top and it would look like the card blank. You wouldn't be able to tell that it was actually a separate piece of paper. I wanted to raise my square up above the sentiment and above the card front. So I added lots of foam tape to the back removed the release paper and added a bit of glue to the bit that was going to be in contact with the sentiment piece and then placed the square over the sentiment piece and the glue on the back allowed me to wiggle that sentiment piece so the words were in the centre of the rectangle. I hope you can see what I mean. I then added some more glue to the rest of the foam tape and the back of the sentiment piece and then placed this square more or less in the middle of my card blank using my T-square ruler to help me get it lined up. Again, I put the glue on the back, even though the foam is adhesive, I put the glue on the back to give me that little bit of wriggle room. I really liked the way the card was looking at this point, but I wasn't convinced that it was finished. So I took my smallest star punch and punched out some stars from Smooth White cardstock. I then dipped them in glue and tucked them around the sentiment. This adds a little bit of interest and texture to this sentiment area, but it doesn't bring in any colour or metallic that might take the attention away from the sentiment itself or the stars that are already there. It looks almost as if the paper has been embossed with stars because it's white stars on white paper. As well as adding these little stars into the aperture, I did add some in the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner as if they were tumbling again across the card in a diagonal fashion. And I think for me this finished it off really nicely. Just an added little detail, an added bit of interest that elevates the card I think. And that's this card finished. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you another idea of something you can do with your 6x6 paper pads or any patterned or coloured paper, homemade or shop bought. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this 6x6 paper pad series. You can find the playlist on my channel. And I do hope you'll join me for another video tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.